do want to make a distinction here because the Harvard Working Group, contrary to what some people have said, is not an advocacy group for the railroad. Obviously, we would love to see the railroad here, but it's not going to happen this year, it's not going to happen next year. Our concern is that we want to see use of the harbor ASAP. With you don't have the railroad, we need to use the harbor anyway. But definitely, we are advocates for the railroad from the point it takes common sense to us. And the railroad is, is part of the future visionary of what the harbor, the port, the humble day can be. And that's what this group is trying to advocate for. We need to have better utilization of the harbor. We want to see that port. And what we're trying to do with, uh, the last couple months and the next uh, three, four months is to try to establish a vision of what the future of the port can be. And uh, hopefully keep attending. We appreciate your attendance here. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Pete. Pete's been involved with uh, both railroads since. <laughs> Before here, I think. We were, both of us were involved with the North Coast, uh, North South Railroad when it went to Funk, or not to Funk, but when it uh, uh, was washed out, we were fighting to try to get the trail to the railroad reopened. So this took back 20 years, I think, plus. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, let me say, I'm not passing on the tip chart. Please be generous. Well, this is for me to thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to start off with that. Please, uh, yeah, this is one of the waitress who's been uh, very helpful to us. Uh, any questions we have before we start? You better tip her because you don't have like food for <laughs> And uh, my, my expectation is that, is that uh, I probably won't get a chance to have a dissertation afterwards. So, for the next meeting we're looking at is a presentation in terms of what the plans are for the new docks and for repair of the docks that we have. That's going to be very interesting in the period of the two. Uh, any other questions? No questions? Then I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we thought we'd have a little different uh, speaker this week, but it, it, uh, it didn't turn out that. The first thing that you've all read about in the paper is the uh, NCRA and what's being proposed about the NCRA, which is the North Coast Rail Authority. It's a state, independent state charter agency, just like our Harvard district is, and it was formed um, with an unfunded mandate. Um, and it didn't have any funds to operate with, and it was said, do your job. So it's been straddled with that for, um, for a couple of decades now, about 1998 to now, so it's uh, two decades, roughly. And currently, um, McGuire has a bill, number 1029, SB 10, uh, 1029, that is one started out, it's been through several iterations now with, with amendments, but it started out converting the 300 odd miles of the NCRA's uh, jurisdiction in uh, Marin, uh, Mendocino, Sonoma, and Humboldt counties uh, where they have their assets, their right of way, their life, and to convert it to trail or rails trails. Now, in 2012, um, there were uh, charrettes held in the county here, three major ones, to say what we, what should be the policy. And that policy was finally adopted by the NCRA in 2012 that says it would be rails and trails, not rails or trails because there were advocates for converting the whole thing to trails. And so for these uh, years, since 2012, the policy, the adopted, voted upon policy of the NCRA is rail to trails. Well, along comes um, McGuire developing, uh, proposing this bill, and it wants to convert a lot of the rail right-of-way to trails exclusively. Well, that has morphed a little bit. 
There's freight running actively on the first 51 miles or so between uh, Moran and, uh, and north of uh, Santa Rosa um, area. And uh, the NCRA uh, would like to open up to Willis uh, as money becomes available to uh, uh, create a viable freight operation there. And the NCRA has no plans for the Keel River Canyon, and it was hoping to maintain an asset along the north coast here around the bay, the rail line around the bay down to Southport, for the possibility of freight to operate on that. Well, this bill, as it is structured now, allows for uh, mass transit and freight to operate cooperatively on the area just Windsor South, which is the first 51 miles, Windsor's a little about San Rosa, you know. Uh, and freight and mass transit would run cooperatively on the right-of-way with accompanied by trail adjacent to it. And then north of uh, Windsor to the uh, to just north of Willis a little bit um, would be potentially rail bank and also would be the next tranche of the NCRA's um, jurisdiction through the Eel River Canyon. But the area through, up to Willis um, uh, gives uh, trail a dominant uh, say in how that's going to be. And to, it would have to be the rail bank to use for freight. Around Humboldt Bay would have the existing trail system um, sometimes sharing right away with rail or adjacent to the our, uh, jurisdiction of the NCRA from Samoa to Eureka. And Below Eureka, um, the legislation pr proposes rail banking the whole area into the Eel River Canyon section. The Eel River Canyon section is specifically identified for rail, uh, for rail banking so a trail can be constructed. There, and all this is done by um, uh, eliminating the NCRA as a state agency over the first two years and um, authorizing temporary uh, and future jurisdictions to take it over, but the final jurisdiction somewhere after 2021, and some of the agencies are still to be formed that might handle it. Now, all this was done, and I'll speak to Humboldt County specifically, without ever consulting your Board of Supervisors or any of the cities here or HCOB. This was formulated and proposed without any consultation with any of these um, legislative uh, uh, jurisdiction, H guys not legislative, of course. But um, and so this was done in a vacuum. And Estelle has been working to put in modifications and has uh, achieved some modicum of success, but it still uh, has um, rail subservient to trail in how the right of way is used south of Eureka to South Fork. And that should be a concern because the adopted policy of everyone um, is rails with trails. Now this is important um, for both social and economic reasons here. We are so challenged 
for economic resources and transportation resources to um, abandon this resource for future use to rail bank it, which would be a, a major deal to then put rail on it after it's rail bank, is a real consideration, especially when you can have trails adjacent to it. So those modifications are things that we would like to see in the final bill, but um, your voice needs to be heard to your um, local uh, elected officials uh, so that they clearly understand this. This was not really brought into public purview till um, roughly uh, two months ago. <laughs> And it was a done deal. And when many of us met with representatives of McGuire, we were told it's a done deal, and nothing we said had much effect. But fortunately, Estelle Fennell has been able to create a dialogue with McGuire and get a few changes, but they're not enough, in order to preserve this asset so that we have the potential of using this asset for economic value here. The, um, the transfer of that asset would be uh, to ser several entities, one of which is SMART in the southern part of it, and the other is uh, Caltrans, uh, pretty much so, in the northern part. Caltrans has never been a friend of NCRA. And that's always been a problem over the years. So uh, getting, um, they're into dealing with roads and not dealing with uh, other forms of transportation, even though their name would indicate other. So it would be desirable for you to make your voice known to uh, your elected officials on this. Uh, when you have phrases on that um, an excursion train around the bay shall not interfere or harm the agency's trail, and they allow the trail as part of that right of way, it's that type of language that's still there that causes a problem because the two can exist as companion, co-using the same um, right-of-way. And that language is a, a, a pretty heavy um, hamper, both um, that, that just puts a wet blanket on how that resource might be used in the future. Around, from Samoa to Eureka, the, uh, it would be rails with trails, except a temporary co-use of trails um, between where the, um, a crossing the Eureka Slough Bridge into Eureka to the Eureka Trail. So until Caltrans built a new bridge over Eureka Slough, there would be co-use of that. But that it, within this legislation is has a rails with tails trails uh, um, policy, uh, except for potentially the temporal, temporary use of the Eureka Bridge. But that temporary use could be for 20 years until Caltrans builds uh, a new bridge over uh, Highway 101. And Hank Simmons is uh, as Hank Simmons is. Uh, um, spearheading that effort for the county's behalf. Uh, and right now he has pr proposed a co-use of the Eureka Sleep Bridge. <coughs> any, any comments so far on, on this, this uh, part of, of the discussion? Yeah, I'm just wondering about the rail with trails. Is, is there an expectation that when that occurs, or if it occurs, you have to put up a fence between the two users? 
Um, oh, where are you? Uh, are you talking about on the whole? On the ground, the Bay Trail, separating that from a railroad. Um, restate your question. Is there a is there an expectation that you would have to separate those two uses by a fence? There will be. Um, that is part of uh, there. Um, the rail, the rail, uh, federal rail agency mandates certain types of separation when that gets used, um, and it has to be so far from center line, and there has to be barriers. There are precedents for that when they when they share rights away and it's relatively close. Um, so the answer is yes, they they do have to be separated. There are safety um, issues uh, that are obvious, and there are ways of dealing with those safety issues. I just wonder your concern with the wet blanket language if that was addressing who pays for that fence, for example. The trail pays for that fence. Oh, okay. Even if the language is there that said the railroad won't impinge on the use of the trail. Um, Good. Correct. Uh, because that's rails and trails for that section. Okay. And um, the trail would probably be. But remember, the the language is a little loose in this, and these things have a way of um, redefining themselves um, as time passes, and and so. That's the theory, but that doesn't mean that's the actual thing. <coughs> Understand that the legalities here, I may not be qualified to answer completely. But when something is rail bank, there's a procedure for bringing it back into rail service. And um, there's a procedure for uh, the, the trail that's used that to contribute um, theoretically in whole, but at least uh, in part for that re-availability um, for rail service. That's an official rail banking procedure, um, and there are ways to deal with that. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, center required to not uh, involve some of the local agencies. Any of them. Any of them. So, yes, I mean, were, were there any other local groups that had engaged with uh, McGuire that you know of um, to develop that? There were probably some trail people that were involved in the dialogue. So they didn't go through any of the local they just approached them directly? The I, I know of no formal groups that were involved with it, and uh, as to informal discussions uh, such as I just theorized, I, I, I can't. It's unvetted at this point. So, yeah. Yeah, um, maybe it's a little out of what this discussion is here, but still I'd like to kind of clear it out. How much Caltrans money is going Directly to granting agencies or, or to granting agencies for the Humboldt Bay Trail? That's a marvelous question because right now that's not identified. There is no funding identified. It says it shall be done, and there are theoretical agencies over uh, for the first two years and for the second two years, and at first they were unnamed agencies agencies yet to be formed in name. Now, it is my understanding, um, and I'm not a, a knowledgeable about how this legislation works, but it's formed in one side of the, uh, of the legislature, the bill is formed, then it goes to the other side, and there's a finance committee that then inputs to the funding part of this. But uh, there are a lot of things that are not, um, that, that are not uh, spelled out in this yet. And funding is just a little issue because um, you have here the Harbor District that wasn't 
kind of unfunded. It was an unfunded mandate, but there was, a, there was an asset that was worked with. And the NCRA was an unfunded mass uh, asset um, when it was created. Uh, so that's, you know, an, an, an ongoing fund. And the bill says that the agencies will take on the authority of the of running their projects, but they will not be burdened by any lawsuits or debts or other things. So those have to be settled. And they won't be, they'll have to settle existing contracts or those existing contracts, such as the operator of the railroad, would approve the agency. And, um, and uh, the legislature would create funding mechanisms to support freight rail. But all this is pretty nebulous in this bill. Um, I'm going to take back here first, and then I'll get to you. Um, Portland is a good example of the rail the trails that go to the city. But it should also be you noted know, that building the trail and maintaining the trail is a lot easier when you can move heavy equipment that makes a long rail that's really close to it, right? It's so easy to maintain. Also, it's easier uh, medically, and I, I read it someplace very easy to say, like the speeder, those speeder cars, you have ambulances like those that you can roll along. So if somebody gets, you know, is ill or isn't falling down the trail or a heart attack or whatever, you can roll this ambulance out to them and get them back quickly, as opposed to having to assume the helicopter's going out of turn. Well, uh, the, as you know, Timber Heritage runs the speeder, and that was one function of the speeder 100 years ago. We're fortunate to have uh, Richard Marks here, who has um, uh, uh, input into this. And, and Richard, uh, help us out here where you can. Well, I think you summarized everything pretty good, but a couple of things that uh, are, have been coming up. Uh, the reason this happened, that we're even having this discussion, is the California Transportation Commission asked um, for the NCRA to come and uh, explain their finances. And so our executive director for the NCRA went ahead and said that we were having dire financial issues. And uh, then what the commission did is they said that they wanted a, um, you know, a business plan or a shutdown plan of the North Coast Rail Authority. And since that came down the line, it was decided that we would ask Mike McGuire to help us maybe create some sort of a financial bill to help pay for the NCRA to keep doing business. Well, what came out of that is um, Mike uh, wrote a bill, and uh, with it, he had people sitting, you, you, you spoke with the cell, the cell was part of that committee to come up with a... Uh, Richard and Excel are the representatives from Humboldt County on the North Coast Rail Authority Board. Yes, I'm the director of the North Coast Rail Authority, besides being the president of the Harbor Commission. And so anyways, at this, at this point when we were brought forward, this bill has taken many changes. Yeah, but it's already, it's being fast-tracked. It's already been through the Transportation Committee, the Assembly, or the Senate, and it went uh, 10 to nothing, and then there, they, just yesterday, it went through the Natural Resources Committee and passed 9 to 0, and it, it has bipartisan support for trail banking, or rail banking, the, uh, the, the over the rail. That's, uh, that's the main focus that, that they have. And uh, also, that's if, if you talk to the other counties, that's their, they want to protect the freight service in the southern part from from uh, uh, Jillville, uh, yeah, all the way to Windsor. <coughs> that's their hope of doing. And anyways, the next NCRA meeting, if anybody wants to go, this is the perfect time because it's May 9th. And is at the Board of Supervisors here in Humboldt County at 10:30 in the morning. And you'd be able to get all updates on everything that's going on as far as that project and uh, hear it from, uh, at that time, right up to date of what the amendments they've made. Uh, this is, you're right, this is time to really get involved and get people to talk about what they've The Harbor District had no say-so. 
in the early bill, really. And these are just board of supervisors or any of the No, McGuire took hold of this and his office is, is controlling this. this. And like, like, like I said, they have, we have a committee in the NCRA, but there is no real public. I mean, the public input is just like this. <coughs> the, the original problem was from, uh, uh, it was created because Caltrans has never been um, a friend of the NCRA. And some of the people that were um, involved with Caltrans for many years then became involved with uh, and associated with people in the uh, uh, finance, uh, was it the finance committee that was set up that Doug Bosco spoke in a strange way. Uh, it, it wasn't actually Mitch Stog here, it was Doug Bosco that uh, was misinterpreted, at least in the press, by what he meant and what he said, that really uh, is the first we really knew about this, uh, about the, uh, these greater issues. Um, and the NCRA is in better financial shape today than it has been in uh, 20 years since uh, Dan Hauser uh, was involved. Um, anything else, Richard? I'm sure there is. There you, you'll, well, that, uh, that, that's one of the issues was yeah. there, our finances are a little bit better because we've been selling assets. Yeah. Properties but, that the rail right away has and that's to keep going into actually bringing money to help pay for operations and the expansion of rail service. And so uh, Cal, Caltrans gets a portion of that. Yes. And so they're following, they're out all of our meetings to uh, talk to us about how much they're going to get. Anything that is sold in Humboldt County, any type of properties, Caltrans gets 100% of it right now. It, all of it. And so there's nothing that the NCRA would really gain too much if they sold any of the properties that ride away in Humboldt County. The, the uh, properties that are being sold off are not germane to freight operations, they're kind of ancillary to the main uh, uh, right of what, uh, uh, rail asset. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. When you refer to uh, South Fork, what, where exactly are you referring to? And is that the point that you need to preserve to in order to have access for some of the routes over to the Red Bluff area? The answer to the last question is no, but there are um, uh, riparian upland gravel assets in the South Fork area that are permitted, but also a tourist train might want to go between South Fork and Samoa in some manner and periodically, because the South Fork with the uh, uh, redwood groves there that are uh, treasures would be a, an attractive feature uh, to include in that. Perhaps the town of Scotia and every place in between might allow for um, use for co use for uh, uh, tourism generation, um, but also for economic value. So that's why the South Fork is theorized as the southern um, portion in Humboldt County that should be uh, protected as an asset. Did that answer the question? Um, that doesn't mean all of it will be used at the same time, and it doesn't guarantee, but you, it, once you give away an asset, how do you um, redevelop it? And then that, that's it. Just like our harbor, we, we try to have uh, a multi-use um, policy for different parts of it so that we can maintain it. Now, on to a, something that's part and parcel to um, a really neat thing that can happen here is that um, the opportunity to have a, 
potential route between here and the Central Valley um, has arisen. And we are straddled, we have been straddled historically with the north-south route. In 1909, as many of you know, one of our local surveyors, and somebody in Northern California was here, Lentel is the, was his name, surveyed a route for a rail line between here and the Central Valley. And there were, there were a couple of uh, forks in this and a uh, possibility. And, but at the same time, the, uh, he had done that and there were um, potential people that wanted to build it. And the focus at that point was uh, interest in the Central Valley and mining interest and whatever other interest. And that was the focus of their um, uh, wanting to build a rail line. But the timber companies, those guys were doing it. They said, we got to get our product to San Francisco, which is our market, because we need to rebuild them after the fire. So they punched through the north-south line and um, and they did it with, without the knowledge that we have today of the challenge geology. Uh, they were uh, they did it without the having the sensitivities that are so important to us today on the environmental aspects. It was purely we can do it, we'll do it, we'll pay for it, and that's and it's going to be done. And uh, with the um, I'll call it cheap manpower. You never know how cheap it was in relative times, but it was it was cheap. And they punched through that line. Of course, all these cities weren't there at the time. But that route, as we know, has been challenged, and that route was profitable um, up until a, a few decades ago. And Southern Pacific uh, always did want to abandon it because. First of all, it was a little bit higher cost, but also um, uh, Union Pacific and other uh, uh, rail lines like to run trunk lines now, and they have feeder lines going into it. So they were interested in the trunk lines, and they were abandoning or selling off lots of uh, feeder lines. But an effort came about that prevented them from abandoning it. I believe that effort was defined in the 70s. Is that correct, Bill? Uh, the effort to prevent uh, uh, Union Pacific from abandoning the uh, uh, Southern Pacific. The Southern Pacific. It was 1982 when they filed the petition. Okay. So, um, and it was sell off a couple of times to. Um, Challenged operator, challenged financially uh, operator, um, 